The idea is so simple. Why aren't more people trying it? And a lot of people are like uh, noticing how the hype that comes with ChatGPT and the whole idea is creating cognition, which is sort of getting outed by a lot of people as a very nice PR thing. But the industry is so full of like dream and you're actually putting this not to some idea that it'll have cognition, but that it will be an agent that is autonomous, but is given rules and is audited. But let me bring it back to an interesting thing you challenge here, and it does bring us to the history of where we got here and some of the problems with AI, because so many people are starting with the technology of AI and trying to apply it to a software-based world that is form-based applications to object-centered design. And the critical entity in a business process becomes the intelligent object with its own communication channels and AI capabilities. You're moving away from form-based applications really challenges the tradition of user experience research. Are we throwing away the old way of doing it and starting to create a new user experience? Completely. I mean, you put it beautifully. And I just see the AI, the prompt is a weakness is all I'm saying. I can do it. Not everybody can. It's a very paper form based idea. When I see everyone I'm talking with who creates apps, all move to something, I'll just call it a button, but the button is inherently an agent that does a specific task. Very simple, but it's all getting agentified as a, one of my interviewees called it a MongoDB. Their, their mantra is, can we agentify this? And I really, and that's what I'm seeing too. What do you see? LLMs, the whole hype about them turning into AGI and solving all the problems, that's a pipe dream. Okay, and whoever talks like that, they really, really... Uh, haven't thought about the problem or they don't really have expertise to that. But, and ultimately, when it comes back to this collaboration and intelligence gathering, if you imagine your system organized hierarchically, just like our biology is, that each agent has its own intelligence, has its own information, and it can actually ex transmit its experiences to the higher level, to the uh, to the liver and the liver to the brain. So, and if you think of uh, electronic medical systems, all the x-rays can uh, bubble up their experiences of chest x-ray to the upper level and the upper level all the way up. And you can imagine that the information about an x-ray, the, if there's an intelligence up there and understands, it can communicate with the intelligence super object that's sitting on top of blood tests. Okay, so they can communicate. Right. Now you have cross uh, classification information exchange and inter intelligent exchange. This is where it's worthy of research. This is the area that we need put, to put more money and research it like this in this path. Uh, I'm not saying the, 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 the trying to figure out how to uh, add reasoning and multi-level uh, uh, the, the layers on top of LLMs and uh, making them safer. That's great. But I hope that we start paying attention to what matters and where we can really see it an amazing level of ROI. Once we truly fuse AI in a, in a natural organic way, in the way we're, at least we're suggesting in one way, with software that, that is eating the world in the words of Mark Andreessen. Instead of one LLM to do everything, many chat GPTs designed for the objects driving business. The Darwinian leap is making objects intelligent, which brings lightning fast efficiency because the object coordinates it all and is super intelligent. First AI movers are looking at automating what people do, which is organizing and reporting an ancient practice. AI can do all of this if you move from helping people do what they're already doing and down to the actual objects that can take the load off of people and do it better. It's like each object has its own mini LLM, its own little chat GPT designed for its tasks and the people involved. Still, we have businesses with disconnected silos. It's a mess, all these departments. How do you stop these mini LLMs from turning things into more chaos? But your model will really create this. There's a lot of little micro LLMs. It's a complex web of interconnected objects. How do you prevent this from becoming an unmanageable tangled mess in large enterprises that are siloed and may not know, like the right arm doesn't know what the left arm's doing? Yeah, well, obviously you really need careful design planning for this, right? I mean, it's like the, ultimately what's wonderful about this is that 
you're not going to let LLMs run wild and make decisions on their own. What you're doing is really constraining each tiny little language model to the data entity that they're dealing with, uh, constraining information exchange with the right stakeholders is deeply embedded in this model. Imagine if each data element knows the type of stakeholders. If I'm, a, if I'm an x-ray, for example, and I know you're the doctor and I'm programmed ahead of time, knowing what kind of information I can share with you, or I know I'm supposed to go read the HIPAA that was just published because I, I'm a system, I live in the United States and HIPAA is basically a set of rules that is the healthcare privacy that the, the federal government passes. And they augment that from time to time. And let's say you're the x-ray and you're supposed, you're my doctor, you're the x-ray and, and I know that's my patient and you're going to go talk to the patient. I know that I just go read that HIPAA uh, that was published two minutes ago and I could come and tell you, Declan, before you talk to the patient, Here's the latest thing that just happened. Not only I can constrain the exchange of and the type of information that people have access to based on their classification, this model very elegantly organizes this kind of information and it knows that these are segmented processes and does not allow breach of, of this. And this is all by design. It's not random that you turn and lemon and say, go figure it out. This is what the problem is with the large language models that, and also when they start, start hyping this about AGI, 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 that is going to solve all kinds of problems. And, and you remember, if I mentioned last time, it's like, I don't buy any of this hype. And it's great. All the things that uh, OpenAI is doing with the large language models, they, they do need a lot of improvement in, in many different ways, but they're not going to be able to solve this software problem. The software problem is going to be solved by rethinking building software from uh, first principle with the view of the existence and the capabilities of AI and with some of these features. And the job of the software developer is not over. The designers and software engineers are going to have to come and have the, the, the basically embed their understanding, full understanding of these silos and how, how information needs to be shared with whom and, and what the rules are. So we are basically implementing and giving those rules to the data. And once you do that, if you can imagine Everybody is self-behaving. It's basically self-disciplining or self-organizing and self-regulating, if you will. And on top of that, you can have engines that reason. So these are the next layers.